Here's how to build a commander deck with a turn-by-turn -turn strategy using probability. Yes, we're going into hypergeometric distribution. Let's do this. The goal of this video is to give you, the viewer, a clear understanding of how to build a commander deck with probabilities that inform a turn-by-turn -turn strategy. There is a lot of data out there on the internet about commander, game length, first KO, win types. We can use all of this to help us build a consistent deck that doesn't need to use tutors or game changer cards. Hypergeometric distribution is the best way or the most accurate way of calculating the likeliness and probability of drawing a card out of your deck in a game of Magic the Gathering. The formula is on screen, but do not worry, you don't need to memorize this formula or understand how to do the maths. I just want to show you how it works so you have a base understanding and then there is links down below to a load of hypergeometric calculators that you can use that you just have to put four numbers in and I'm going to explain those to you now. So capital N is the total number of cards in your deck, so in Commander this would be 99. Capital K is the number of the target card in your deck that you want to target to see if you can draw. The lowercase n is the number of cards you have drawn up until this point. So in your opening hand, it would be seven cards drawn. Turn three would be 10 cards drawn. Seven in your opening hands, turn one, turn two, turn three draws. Lovely. Lowercase k is the number of the target cards that you want to have drawn within the lowercase n card. You want to have three land in your opening hand of seven. What is the probability of that? That all being said, let's get on with the guide. For this commander deck building guide, I'm going to assume a few things. First off is that your commander costs four mana. Four mana is the average cost of a commander these days, so I'm using that as my benchmark. Next up, I'm going to assume that you want to cast your commander on curve, so that means on turn four at the very latest. And lastly, I want to make sure that we're hitting about a 75% success rate on all of these probabilities. So three out of four games we know are going to be good and our deck is doing our thing. That being said, let's start with lands. 37 lands will give you a 64.9% chance to draw four or more lands by the time we hit turn 4. 38 lands in your deck will give you a 67.6% .6 chance to draw 4 or more. 39 lands will give you a 70% chance. 40 lands will give you a 72.6% chance. And 41 lands will give you 75% chance of drawing 4 or more lands by turn 4. This means that when we get to turn 4, we can cast our commander without any other assistance. If you are running 36 lands, you now have a 63.8% chance to draw four or less lands by turn four. This means that you are more likely to whiff. If you are running 35 lands, you have a 66.6% .6 chance to draw four or less. So as you can see with these two, you are more likely to whiff. With our mana base sorted, let's jump into turn two and talking about ramp. Don't worry, I've not forgot about turn one, more on that later. If we are running eight ramp cards in our deck that cost two CMC or less, so we can cast them on turn two, enabling us to cast our commander a turn earlier on turn three, we have about a 84.6% chance to draw one or less of them in our deck. 10 cards gives us a 77.5% chance to draw one or less. 12 cards gives us a 70.4% chance to draw one or more. And 14 cards gives us 76.2% chance to draw one or more of them by turn two. So if it's crucial that you cast your four mana commander on turn three, we know to be consistent, we need at least 14 ramp spells that cost two CMC or less in our deck. Let's talk card draw. So this is turn three, and I'm gonna assume you have six permanents on the battlefield. That's three lands and a one, two, or three drop, or one of those drops is your commander. So you'll have four or five cards left in hand. We wanna make sure we keep our hand full so we can stay in the game. Eight card draw spells in your deck gives you a 58.7% chance to draw one or more of them by turn three. 10 is a 67.4% chance and 12 is a 74.3% chance. If we've been following the guide successfully so far, we have a card draw spell in hand. We've just played our fourth land drop. We ramped on turn two, giving us access to five mana and we have our commander in play. So now it's all about casting that draw spell, refilling our hand and playing some synergistic cards that enable our deck. If we have eight key cards in our deck, that gives us a 62.5% chance of drawing one or more of them by turn four. 10 gives us a 71% chance of drawing one or more by turn four. And 12 gives us a 77.8% chance of drawing one or more. These cards could be your sacrifice outlet, your token makers, something like that. The key pieces that enable your deck to do its thing. We are going to do the same again for turn five. So on turn five, if we have eight of these cards in our deck, 
we have a 65.9% chance of getting one or more of them by turn 5. 10 of them in our deck gives us a 74.3% chance, and 12 gives us an 80.8% chance of getting one or more of them by turn 5. So turn 4 and turn 5 is us enabling our strategy, greasing our wheels and doing what our deck wants to do. Setting up your engine, so to speak. With our engine set up and our deck starting to do its thing, we need to look at what our opponents are doing. Welcome to turn 6. This is where we're going to start interacting with our opponents and using our spells to disrupt, interrupt, interact, remove. You pick the buzzword that you want to use there. If we have eight removal disruption spells in our deck, we have a 69% chance of drawing one or more of them by turn six. Nine gives us a 73.4% chance of drawing one or more. And 10 gives us a 77.3% chance of drawing one or more by turn six. This means on turn six, we have our engine enabled and we can start to disrupt our opponents, slowing them down, increasing the odds of us winning the game. We're on to turn seven now and we are back to synergy. But this is the wider synergy within our deck. We've got a couple of the key pieces out on turn four and five. This is another type of card that just has a wider synergy within our deck. So this is the bread and butter, so to speak, of your deck. If we have 22 cards in our deck that have general synergy, we have a 64.8% chance to draw three or more of them by turn seven. 25 of those synergistic cards in our deck gives us a 74.6% chance to draw three or more of them by turn seven. And 30 synergistic cards in our deck gives us an 86.5% chance to have drawn three or more of them by turn seven. Remember, you might have cast one or two of them on turn four or five, but at least in our hand, we have some key pieces that enable our deck to do its strategy. We've made it to turn eight, and this is where we're likely to see our first player elimination. According to data from EDHREC, the first player is eliminated around turn 8, and then the game will end on turns 9 and 10 in its entirety. So we need to make sure at this point in the game that we can find our game-winning cards. Our game-winning cards are things like Crater Hoof, Expropriate, Mechanized Production, Field of the Dead, Coalition Victory, now it's unbanned, Your Bolus of Citadel, Approach of the Second Sun, Triumph of the Hordes, anything like that that's going to enable your deck to do its thing to push forward for victory. If we have three of those types of cards in our deck, and we have drawn the allotted 15 cards by this point, we have a 39.3% chance of drawing one of them. If we have five of those cards in our deck, we will have a 56.8% chance of drawing one of those. However, if our engine is up and running on turns four and five, and we enabled more synergy on turn seven, I'm going to assume you have drawn more than the allotted 15 cards by this point in the game. So 20 cards deep, that gives us a 49.6% chance or a 68.5% chance, depending on how many game winning cards you're running. If you're 25 cards deep, that's 58.7% chance or a 77.5% chance. And if you're 30 cards deep, that's a 66.6% .6 chance or a 84.3% chance of finding those game winning cards. So as you can see, a good amount of card draw, a lot of nice synergy will help push you through your deck to enable you to find those game winning cards a lot more often. Let's jump all the way back to turn one. I told you I wouldn't forget, didn't I? So if we want to get on the board nice and early with a one drop, whether that be a Mana Vault, an Esper Sentinel, a Utopia Sprawl, let's make sure we are running a critical mass of them to enable to draw one of those within the first eight cards of our deck. If we have 10 one drops, we have a 58.7% chance of playing one of those on turn one. 12 one drops gives us a 65.9% chance to get one or more of those on turn one. 14 one drops gives us a 71.9% chance and 16 gives us a 77% chance. So as you can see, if you want to get on the board nice and early, you need to be running at least 16 one drops. The big question dwelling in the back of your mind right now is how the hell do I fit all of this into 58 cards if 41 cards of my deck are lands? And now is the point where I talk about slot compression. So lands can also be spells. This is our modal double face card, our MDFCs. Lands can also be creatures. Arbor Dryad, also MDFCs. We also have creatures that are removable. Ravenous Chupacabra, Thrashing Brontodon, Elvish Reclaimer, things like that. We also have cards that are modal. So you can pick one or more options that can fulfill removal or draw slots. There is a lot of cards out there. Please make sure when you're looking for cards for your deck, you find ones that do double duty. They may not be the most popular, but they will fulfill your deck slots a lot better if they can do multiple roles. Remember, if we are playing lands consistently, paying an extra mana for a spell that does exactly what we want when we want is not such a bad thing, because if we start to cut lands in favour of more 
popular cards, then we might find ourselves struggling to cast things on curve. And there we have it, an entire guide on how to build a commander deck using probability with a turn-by-turn -turn strategy. All you need now is to apply it to the type of deck you're building. Doesn't matter whether it's creature focus, combat damage, Voltron, aristocrats, just identify the types of cards within each section, work out your probabilities using the calculator below, and you're gonna have so much more success. So when you only play Commander one night a week and you only get three or four games in, you now know using this philosophy, at least three out of those four games are gonna be solid. Thank you very much for watching. I appreciate your support as always, and I will see you all in the next video. Goodbye for now.